On this channel, we talk a lot about how to create automations. We have a Home Assistant, YAML, or Node-RED. But there is a tool that everyone has at home that can improve any of your automations. I'm gonna be sharing some tips from this video from some of the coaching experience I've had one-to-one -one with various people and also from the people in my Smart Home membership platform and from generic comments here on YouTube or my videos over the years. The place where a lot of people go wrong is unintended consequences of their own automations. At the end of the day, if you use Home Assistant or Node-RED, the automations that you build are as good as what you tell them to do. Let me give you an example that can apply to many of us. If we have shutters or shades or blinds that we ha can't automate for any reason, at nighttime, we really want to close them before we turn any lights on. The reason for that is because we can have intruders or people outside looking into your property. The one of the things that you really want to do is to ensure that that doesn't happen. So you would say, well, I can sit on my desk and I've got my lights integrated in Home Assistant and I know when the sun sets based on the sunset and the location. So I can just create a simple automation that says at sunset, turn off lights. Well, that might work in principle, but what happens if the shutters and the blinds are really closed? You're gonna to need to create some condition or have some sort of caveat so that automation doesn't run. And that automation makes sense when you are narrow-minded and only thinking about that specific use case. And this is where we have these unintended consequences. Even in one of my last videos, we talked about the movie scene when you turn on the movie and then the lights dim down to the desired option. There are unintended consequences with that also. Let's say for any reason, someone decides to have the brightness either higher or lower. Every time that you play a movie, then the scene resets. You might say, well, this movie is gonna be only three hours or two hours, so it will be fine. No, think about if you're pausing and then replaying. That's an unintended consequence. So that will really annoy someone because every time you pause the movie and then you play it again, the lights will reset to what the scene says. So how do you cater for all of these scenarios? How can you think about them in advance? This is where we're gonna be talking about this tool. You might have noticed that I had this pencil on my ear the whole time. And the reason of that is this is gonna really help us with some sticky notes or a notepad to help us crack our automation problem. Now this is what you need to do once you finish watching this video. You gotta take a pencil, or multiple pencils and you're gonna take a notepad and you're gonna put them in the rooms where most of your devices and your automations are actually happening. If you live with more people, you need to tell them that if something happens at house that they don't quite understand, they can just simply take this pencil and write down the time and what happened. This will really give you an insight on things that happen in your home or patterns that maybe your family have that you haven't quite thought about but these automations are getting in their way of their normal enjoyment of their own home. This will not only help increase your acceptance factor in your home, because you're actually showing everyone that you really care that automations enhance people's life and don't hinder their activities, but also it will help you to get a better insight in automations. I want you to leave that there for a week or two weeks, collect the notes once that period finished, and when you have a couple of hours, maybe on a weekend, sit down at your desk and go through the notes. I want you to prioritize the device and the automation that you think is causing the most pain and fix that first. You don't have to fix everything because sometimes we can accept failure. There's always balance. So this automation might work 99% of the time and it might fail or have an unintended consequence, but that doesn't really cause that much pain and the benefit of the times that the thing is automated outweighs that. So you're gonna to need to use some discretion and understand and maybe talk to the people in your family about the specific automations that are causing you problems. And you're gonna to have to accept that sometimes you just have to disable this automation or just simply delete it. If you only take one thing away from this video, I really want you to listen to the next point because it is very, very important. If you're just starting out in your smart home journey, either with Home Assistant, HomeKit, or it doesn't matter with what, what 
platform you're using. I want you to avoid high risk devices. Let me talk to you about what is a high risk device. A high risk device might be, for example, an indoor camera. It might be a garage door. It might be a lock. So I don't want you to automate these devices until you have a great level of confidence in what you're doing, but also you've clearly talked to everyone about what might happen or what might not happen. Let me give you a scenario. Let's say that you want to implement some fancy number plate recognition using Frigate and you want to open your garage door as soon as your car number plate is censored and you want that really to work really well, turn lights on, da 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 da. A car comes in and garage door goes down. Beautiful. Now, let's think about the failure rate. What happens if this goes wrong? When can it go wrong? It is difficult at your desk to understand the scenarios where things might go wrong. But if something does go wrong, what can happen? Well, first of all, the door can open when it's not supposed to open. And this can even happen when you're not at home. So obviously that means like a burglar or a home invader or someone that can come in your house. The other thing that might happen with this example, the garage door, is that you might have your garage door opening and closing at the wrong time. Maybe perhaps if there's a car in the way or a kid or something else. So you need to have some mechanisms. Normally in these cases, most garage doors have sensors and they will prevent actually uh, hitting anything. But it's also useful just to test these out to see if they actually work. Now, I don't want to scare you off home automation, but you have to think about this scenario when things go wrong. Now, one simple mistake like that, having a garage door open, even if nothing happens to you and if nothing gets stolen or no one going into your home, that really can put off your home automation dreams. So buy-in, to getting buy-in from your family once you've made a terrible mistake like that one, is really an uphill battle. I would prefer that you control it manually yourself through home assistance, so you open and close it, but that you stay in control of what happens to these high risk devices. Next week, we're gonna be back with another video with more home automation projects. So subscribe to this channel not to miss it. And I hope you got value out of this one. If you have, remember to like and comment in the section down below on your own thoughts about improving our automations. Now, if you wanna save a lot of time and money and avoid these costly mistakes, especially if you're, for example, building a smart home from scratch, then I'm launching a new coaching service. You'll find the link in the description down below. I have limited time in my calendar, but I'm looking forward to talking to more people in a one-to-one -one setting and to ho hopefully save you a lot of time and money in your smart home projects. For everyone else, you can click this video over here to learn more about home automation and home assistant. I'll see you in that video. This is Gio from Smart Home Makers. Ciao.